Let's start with an incompetent sin for Konami for never re-releasing this game on any modern system and leaving it locked on the PlayStation 3. I was forced to use PlayStation Plus to even play this game on Sony servers and deal with input lag. What's with the weird live-action television shows I can watch before starting the game? As far as setting the stage goes, it's a complete failure. The only plus is that it gave David Hayter an on-screen role. I just remembered why I never bought a PlayStation 3. All of the games were hideous looking. I honestly believe MGS3 looks better than MGS4. The Dead Sea Scrolls had more color than this game. War has changed. According to Mr. Ron Perlman, war never changes. It's an endless series of proxy battles fought by mercenaries and machines. So it's just proxy wars then. That isn't a change to warfare post-World War II. War and its consumption of life has become a well-oiled machine. Has changed. I think Kojima, in a rush to dunk on Fallout 3, kind of missed the point behind the famous opening line of War Never Changes. It's not stating that technology doesn't change. Just the opposite. It's that war is in mankind's very soul and can never be separated from it. That humans are self-destructive and that any new technology is born from conflict. Nanomachines inside their bodies enhance and regulate their abilities. Genetic control. Information control. Emotion control. Battlefield control. Everything is monitored and kept under control. Do you remember all that intriguing stuff about information control and censorship that was the heart of Metal Gear Solid 2? Let's ditch that in favor of nano machines that control people's minds. War has changed. That's the third time you've said it, Snake. I get the theme already. War has changed. That's the fourth time he said it. It took Fallout two decades and four games to hit that count with its tagline. Kojima did it in four minutes. <laughs> Unless these soldiers are all rookies, I have to believe some of them would know what the mooing in the middle of a battle means and they should get the hell out of there. I'ma take a sin off for the geckos though, because that is an awesome design. Kind of sexy too with those legs. Whoever programmed the AI of the geckos watched too much Predator, since this one stood ominously over Snake for some time even though it had the drop on him and didn't attack until Snake noticed. Snake is turning into Soldier 76. Not as gay though, but give Konami enough time and they might change that retroactively to chase clout. In hindsight, that label on the cardboard box was more accurate than anything Kojima has ever predicted in his games. The geckos couldn't detect Snake since his octo camo blends him in with the environment and masks his heat signature. Except for his head, which isn't covered. They should be able to see his head and their thermal sensors no problem. Also, Snake always has the suit on when he encounters geckos. If his head doesn't matter to their thermal sensors, how do they ever see him, since the suit is always masking his heat signature? Jesus Christ, was Kojima okay during the development of this game? Let him use some color. I can't think of any reason Snake would visit the grave of Big Boss, his progenitor who betrayed him and tried to kill him twice. Snake's accelerated aging must have already given him Alzheimer's, since he has memories of the ending of Metal Gear Solid 3, something that took place before his own birth. But we don't know where Naomi is. Oh yeah, she was a character in this series. Took Kojima quite a while to remember her, Marilyn Mei Ling. I figured the only place I'd see you dressed like that would be at your daughter's wedding. Speaking of past characters, Meryl is now Campbell's daughter for some reason instead of his niece. Also, that whole thing about Olga's daughter Sunny and Snake going to rescue her at the end of Metal Gear Solid 2? Well, that happened in between games, and it wasn't Snake who saved her. It was Raiden, and then he just dropped her off with Snake and Otacon. I hope Snake's cargo plane is headed wherever Campbell is going, because they are having this debriefing in the air, and that is not something you can turn around easily. Also, who's flying this thing? Snake, Otacon, and Sunny are the only people who live out of it, and none of them ever pilot it. The Manhattan incident triggered a serious public backlash. Now the U.S. has to think twice before intervening militarily in other countries' affairs. Why? The Big Shell incident was entirely domestic outside of some Russian soldiers. It involved the actions of the president and former U.S. president. I think the backlash would have been focused on Washington and the constitutional crisis the country would have found itself in. It's real cute. But Sonny named these chickens after Snake and his brothers, one of which he had to kill. Considering this game deals heavily with PTSD, that seems like a bit of an insensitive trigger. The rise of the PMC has spawned a war by proxy spreading across the globe. Unless Snake hasn't stuck his head outside this plane in the last five years, I think he, a former soldier, would know the state of the world and that countries now rely on PMCs instead of regular armies. The system was developed by Arms Tech Security. Arms Tech? You mean AT Corp? 
The company that was near bankrupt and built Metal Gear Rex as a Hail Mary, which was then used as a terrorist weapon by Liquid before the data for it was leaked to the world allowing anyone to build a Metal Gear. Yeah, I can see why that company would be thriving right now. Sunny would have noticed that ashtray next to the stove when she was making the eggs for everyone, but only notices it now after bringing back the uneaten mess. State governments and rebel groups can't match the maintenance price of standing forces. PMCs, by comparison, are reliable. Really? Nations with their ability to collect taxes can't pay to maintain military forces? I've got to tell you guys, this here Metal Gear plot is sounding mighty forced. America has now turned war into a form of economic activity. Analysts are calling it the war economy in that it's picking up the slack for the downward sloping oil market. The whole point of globalism is to make war so costly that it serves as an economic deterrent to it, but this worldwide proxy war is fought by private military companies, which are not only more costly than regular armies, but don't inspire nationalistic sympathies and spur technological and economic growth. Kojima needed to turn on C-SPAN for like 10 minutes to learn how this works. Those five PMCs are run by a dummy corporation that acts as a single mother company. This mother company embodies the five largest PMCs. Her name is Outer Heaven. Outer Heaven? You mean? That's right. It's liquid. It took you that many years to piece this puzzle together. One of the five PMCs has a logo featuring an ocelot, and the Umbrella Corporation controlling all of them is named Outer Heaven. You only came to the conclusion that it might have a connection to Liquid Ocelot now? I watched him die. His will lives on in the body of the man once known as Ocelot. Snake actually forgot about Liquid and his arm being attached to Ocelot, or maybe it was so stupid he intentionally blocked it out. About 18 hours ago, he was spotted in the Middle East. You want to narrow that location down a bit? The Middle East is a big place with a lot of countries. There's a rebel army in the Middle East, made up of ethnic minorities. This game has no balls when it comes to geography. I don't get involved with a plot that can't even offer specifics. Your first objective is to make contact with our informants, Rat Patrol Team Zero One. Campbell might want to mention to Snake that Meryl is in charge of Rat Patrol considering she and Snake had a relationship at one point. I just want to point out that since pressing the start button 40 minutes ago, I've played about 5 minutes of actual gameplay. For all of you who played Snatcher or read about Snatcher since you don't really care enough to play it, I'm sure you jumped out of your seat and pretended to be excited over Otacon's robot. Metal Gear. He said the thing he's known for saying. Put it on your left eye. Looks like an eye patch. I call it the solid eye. Did you purposefully build it to reference Big Boss? Here, Snake, wear this thing that makes you look like your dad. That you killed. Snakes can sport disguises too. Hey, what happened to stealth camo? You used to wear it all the time. All that does is create an optical illusion. It's no use against Gecko with their infrared sensors. Octo camo, on the other hand, has micro peltier arrays that regulate the absorption and release of heat. Why not both? Snake could have Octo Camo for disguising his heat signature, and Optic Camo to make him invisible to regular people. There's nothing really stopping you from adding both features. All of this currently existing technology and Snake gets an iPod. Leave it to Kojima to put a reference to the Naked Gun in his game, since his name is Drebin and he sells Naked Guns. Drebin is aware that if he eats that apple, he will look like an asshole. And any man who introduces himself by doing magic tricks cares a lot about his image. Is the Hider CQC compatible? Oh yeah, Snake now knows how to do CQC, something he's never used before, but gets explained with the excuse that the Patriots declassified the true history of Big Boss, and now everyone is using CQC, and Snake only uses it out of reflex when he sees people coming at him with it. Huh, I can't pull the trigger. Really? That's weird. What's weird? Wait, I got it. I bet you're using an older generation of nano machines. The plot hinges on the notion that all the guns in the world have been replaced with smart weapons that can be turned off by the system. People like Drebin can make a business selling clean guns that work regardless of the person. But think about how many regular guns are in the world right now. Many of them in the hands of rebel groups, militia, third world armies, and just general firearm owners. How would you convince all of these people to give up their perfectly functioning guns for smart weapons that do nothing but have the ability to remotely turn them off? Not to mention the cost of re-equipping all these armies. And then the old weapons would have to be disposed of, and the plan wouldn't even work, because anyone with a bit of know-how can make a homemade gun from common parts. Johnny strayed a pretty far distance from his unit to relieve himself inside of a barrel in the middle of an enemy-controlled street. The only development Johnny has ever had are his bowel movements, and the trend continues in this game. I'm no rookie. I'm a 10-year vet. 
Johnny was one of the genome soldiers who rebelled along with Liquid and Shadow Moses. Then somehow he joined up with the Russian soldiers under Olga that took over Big Shell. How does a guy who was part of two of the biggest terrorist attacks in US history get to rejoin the military and serve in a special ops division that are given the mission of apprehending Liquid? The very guy Johnny once rebelled with. Don't move! Johnny's gun wouldn't even work for Snake due to the SOP system. Actually, it wouldn't work for Johnny either since he has no nanomachines, but the game overlooks his own plot points pretty often. Snake? Campbell didn't tell Snake who he was going to meet, nor was Rat Patrol told who they were meeting. How was this expected to work? They almost killed each other. Uh, uh, Diarrhea. This joke was never funny, and it continues to not be funny. That's Ed, our radio man and sniper. He's not carrying a sniper rifle, though. Also, that combat rifle the Rat Patrol used was cancelled and never entered military service. Back then, I just wanted you to accept me. I wanted you to turn around. Snake and Meryl seemed really close at the end of Metal Gear Solid, and this conversation in no way adequately explains why they broke up. In reality, it just took Kojima a long time to decide which ending was canon. Meryl lives or Meryl dies. I'm starting to believe it would have been better off had she died. But as long as AT Security's system is in place, there's no way he'll succeed. How can you be so sure? They've implemented a system that monitors in real time every single soldier engaged in combat action, whether he's State Army or PMC. Each individual soldier has been fully ID tagged with nano machines injected into their bodies for that purpose. And that explanation right there is why no army, state or private, would ever allow such a system to be used on their soldiers if it was outside of their control. No one wants a soldier that can be turned off. And the Patriots are behind this. La le lu le lo. What are you talking about? The nano machines make it so no one can talk about the Patriots, but it also seems like the Patriots are more well known than ever. So I guess they failed to account for the Streisand effect. Ugh, you gotta be kidding! You expect me to work with my uncle? Meryl should really stop and think for a second about who she is complaining to about her daddy issues. I didn't know Apple was supplying the military with MacBooks. It's the frog. The frogs are Liquid's personal army, made up of entirely women with post-traumatic stress disorder. Just imagine Liquid going through applications looking for those two traits and decided that's what he needed in a soldier. At this point, Johnny is the one who needs depends, not Snake. They can see what I see. And it helps control pain. Is that part of the system, too? Like a real boomer, Snake complains about millennials getting everything instantly. The Beauty and the Beast unit is made up of four women who were traumatized by war in such a way they identified with their respective spirit animals and express emotions, combat styles, and names of all the previous Metal Gear Solid bosses. Sadly, they were given none of the actual character death or personality some of those bosses possessed. But they all have a great ass to make up for it. Brother! It's been too long. When Liquid's personality took control of Ocelot at the end of MGS2, he spoke with Liquid's voice. Despite still being in control of Ocelot's body, he speaks using Ocelot's voice. For a doctor, I would think Naomi would know that sharing needles is a pretty bad idea. Cool shot, but considering the distance between them, Snake would not be that big of a reflection in Liquid's sunglasses. This kid, Fibonacci's. I find it incredibly dumbfounding that every character in Metal Gear Solid is a Mac user. Snake, I'll make this quick. I'm in South America. I've been captured and forced to do research. Naomi didn't look that captured in the Middle East when she left Liquid's side to go help Snake and then returned and got on the chopper all on her own. How much of that thickness do you think is a suit versus Snake's own butt? Vamp would have to know by now that he, along with all of Dead Cell, were used by Ocelot back at Big Shell. Why would he continue working for Liquid Ocelot after that? Someone, somewhere, is jerking off to this. How does Laughing Octopus even know what Snake looks like now? The only person who's seen old Snake was Liquid, and that was from a distance and he didn't take a photo. We watched him die in Manhattan. You watched him die three or four times. That's normal for him. That freak I just saw with the tentacles. Was it using the same Octo Camo system as my suit? Yeah. I thought that technology was of your own design. Um, actually, I kind of based it on some design Sonny snagged off the net. And the data came from? DARPA. I'm beginning to sense a pattern of Otacon taking credit for other people's work. Psychological counselor. A lot of soldiers can't handle the stress of battle, end up panicking. She'll be useful in helping you understand the mindset of both the PMC and rebel soldiers. She? Rosemary. 
Oh god no. The codec conversations were already pretty lame in this game in comparison to the others, but it just got ten times worse. After that, she studied psychology. And now she's a counselor with CSP, the combat stress platoon. First off, Rose is a terrible choice for that, seeing as she constantly worried Raiden about the relationship while he was in the middle of a life or death mission. And second, Snake has been through this many times before and never shown that he needed counseling to get through it. Her advice will have a positive effect on your psych gauge. Survival on the battlefield depends on your psychological well-being. Good job, Kojima. You turned a mental illness into a status bar. He disappeared soon after that. What about you? Jack disappeared and you just moved in on Rose? I was consoling her over her loss, and one thing just led to another. After all that relationship BS in MGS2, Raiden went full anime and became a lone wandering warrior, and Rose shacked up with Campbell. Would you trust a counselor that has this relationship history? Even Metal Gear Solid is susceptible to Call of Duty Syndrome, not just with the washed out color scheme, but the battlefields with endlessly spawning soldiers and explosions. This game is determined to make someone eat that apple and look like an asshole. And they've been convinced that by killing Snake, their minds will be cleansed. They think it's gonna free them from all the pain, and all the fury, and all the sorrow. Do you think there was an actual reason Liquid went through countless files to find women with PTSD and tragic backstories that fit the animal motifs of Foxhound and the emotional states of the Cobra unit? Or was it just a coincidence? Are you with the Patriots? No, sir. I ain't no lale lule. <laughs> I mean, I'm no Patriot. You can say Patriot. Nano machines controlling the words people can say is an incredibly interesting topic that is never brought up again. What the hell are these Patriots? Are they human? Did Raiden not share any of that information he learned about the Patriots being AI with Snake and Otacon? When the character you wrote into your plot is so bland that you have to give him a monkey that smokes and chugs soda, you should probably consider rewriting him to be interesting enough to not need the monkey. Can you hear me? This is Jack, isn't it? I am Raiden. Jack is no more. So much for, from now on, I'm choosing my own name. Raiden, where have you been all this time? What have you been doing? On a mission. Finding something. For someone. Finding what? The corpse. Of Big Boss. Big Mama tasked Raiden with tracking down Big Boss's body in exchange for help rescuing Sunny. Apparently Raiden succeeded and found Big Boss's body and turned it over to her. This will be such a massive falsehood it will take multiple sins to properly explain why. But I'm going to spread them over the course of the video. For now, we'll start with the fact that Raiden actually recovered Vegetable Solidus. And even though Raiden knew Solidus very well and even defeated him, thought it was Big Boss. I know it sounds like I'm making excuses, but I needed to get over it. To move on with my life. There's really no point lying like this to Snake about your true relationship with Campbell. Snake would understand the need for deception to keep Rose and her son safe. This is how scientists would be depicted in porn, not real life. Doesn't the Sony flip phone conflict with all the Apple product placement? Also, I'm beginning to suspect the reason this game hasn't been re-released on anything since is due to all the work Konami would have to do removing expired licensed products and music. I have to give it to Kojima. He is a master of sneaking fan service into his game with changeable camera angles during cutscenes. All right, Snake. Undress. When Naomi promised Snake a strip search the next time they met, I thought it would be the other way around. Oh my god. Yeah, Snake is rapidly aging, but he still has a ripped old man bod. If he dyed his hair, he wouldn't even look that old. So, does the aging have something to do with Fox dye too? No. Your telomeres were intentionally set up to be short, regardless of the age of the original. One of the genes that inhibit reproduction and aging, the Clotho gene, was intentionally mutated as well. Snake has been to doctors and undergone multiple tests for his accelerated aging, but none of them could pinpoint the cause. Only Naomi could diagnose the reason. Artificially shortened telomeres in a mutated Clotho gene, both of which geneticists would be able to identify and something they would look for. Your clones created for one purpose, war. And so, in order to prevent you from being abused by clients or stolen by the enemy, they shortened your lifespan and removed your ability to reproduce. Well, that plan didn't work out so well, did it? Every clone of Big Boss has gone against Zero and the Patriots. The receptors on the fox dye inside your body are breaking down. The rapid aging process is changing the environment within your body. As a result, the virus is starting to mutate. This mutated version of fox dye could activate even if the infected person's genetic pattern doesn't perfectly match the receptors. 
So how about you hit Snake up with some of that fox eye vaccine that was mentioned back in the first game? These came out of your body as well. It's a new strain of fox dye, one I've never seen. Someone must have put them in you recently. Fox dye only serves one purpose, to kill certain individuals that Snake comes in contact with. But no precautions are taken as Snake sets off to meet with all manner of people that the Patriots might want dead. Were I Naomi, I would be very worried about dropping dead from a heart attack since the Patriots have good reason to want her dead as well. Octo Camo is supposed to mask heat signatures. That's the reason Snake is using it. Laughing Octopus uses the same camo, yet she can be detected by her heat signature. I think Kojima actually got hornier as he grew as a developer, replacing character development with fan service. According to Drevin, the Beauty and the Beast unit can't survive outside of their suits for more than a few minutes, but if you fill them full of tranquilizers, they survive just fine. All it took was a heavy dose of drugs to get them over their childhood traumas. Why didn't Nauticon supply Snake with face camo when he gave him the Octo suit? The tech came from the same place. After they made her torture her family and friends, they made her kill him. Sorry, Kojima. No matter how tragic a character's backstory may be, if it's told and not shown, no hot dog for you. Track and find Naomi's trail. I'm not like Big Boss. Tracking isn't my strongest suit. It's kind of odd that no matter who the main character is, they stop being knowledgeable of things they should know so someone can explain it to them. Instead of the focus on combat, missions like this where you track Naomi's footprints through a jungle feel more like authentic Metal Gear. Like this was the one moment where Konami execs left the room and Kojima could stop trying to win over Call of Duty players. At one point, the soldiers escorting Naomi took off her shoes and wore them to try to throw Snake off the trail, then left her shoes in the woods next to an anti-personnel mine. Yet here Naomi is, wearing the same shoes. If Snake took this kind of initiative against non-immortal characters, he would have a lot fewer enemies. I suppose Vamp never did order his men in the chopper to stop Naomi from escaping, but I would assume, since they went to so much trouble to grab her away from Snake and bring her here, that it would go without saying. But they simply sit there and let Naomi jump onto Drebin's tank. The turret on Drebin's APC is remote controlled from inside. There's really no need for Snake to ride on top shooting zombies and geckos. Hey, it's that dork from Metal Gear Solid 2. Raiden was the whiny protagonist in that game, the butt of a gay joke in Metal Gear Solid 3. Now he's been animated up for one scene, then he gets stuck in a hospital bed for pretty much the rest of the game. Bear witness to the master of written romance that is Kojima. With nothing but a subtle pause glance, he sets the stage for what is ultimately a completely stupid romance and rush love between Otacon and Naomi. In just a few years, Raiden takes a much worse beating from Senator Armstrong and doesn't get laid up like this. Hell, he takes a worse beating later in this game and doesn't get hospitalized. The nanomachines in his body cause his wounds to close and heal at an accelerated rate. Someone took the basic nanomachine technology I once researched and perfected it. In a sense, I'm responsible for Vamp. If they perfected technology that makes it nearly impossible to kill someone, why isn't that in greater use among soldiers? But then again, no one, even Liquid, is using that electromagnetic bullet deflection gizmo from MGS2. Naomi has an ulterior motive for running away with Snake and Otacon, but she throws her entire plan out the window after meeting Sunny. She bets the future of humanity on a kid she only knew for a few hours. <laughs> Sunny set her egg timer for one minute, but it didn't go off until two minutes and 40 seconds had passed. Liquid is in Eastern Europe. Well, you really narrowed the search down with Eastern Europe. He's after the corpse of Big Boss. Huh? What for? It's the final key he needs to gain access to SOP. The keys to the system are Big Boss's genetic code and biometric data. I can't think of any reason to make the genetic code of Big Boss the key to gaining control over the entire SOP system. The Patriots made several clones of the guy who were all running around opposed to them. While neither Snake nor Liquid possess an exact copy of Big Boss's genes, Solidus did. And Solidus also had control of Arsenal gear and GW for a time. Why didn't he take control of this system if it was that easy? Big Boss is alive. His body is. Or rather, his cells. That's impossible! Is it really impossible? I mean, you did think Big Boss was dead once before, only for him to still be alive. The same goes for Liquid. And Vamp. And even you. Eastern Europe. They have equipment that can heal me there. Where? The same place Liquid went. That's very convenient that the same unknown city in Eastern Europe where Big Mama has the remains of Big Boss is also where the doctor who can save Raiden is located. I used to be an anime otaku. Used to be? You have anime set as your desktop background. Do you think Otacon is weirded out or turned on by the fact that Naomi has the same voice as his sister? A noir scene in Metal Gear Solid? At least the dull color scheme finally works in its favor. Allow me to point out the flaw in Snake's disguise. He used the face camo to make himself look young again. His accelerated aging isn't a widely known fact. 
and he became a wanted man before that aging. Snake would have been better off looking old if he wanted to slip by, and face camo lets him look like anyone he wants to look like. Sneaking past the security checkpoint should be a cakewalk. If things get out of hand, we can put a total lockdown on the PMC's weapons. They won't be able to fight back. Don't forget, we control the system. If the US has already decided that Liquid is a threat, then why not use SOP to stop him? You know what Snake could do instead of telling this resistance member all the way across town? He could grab him, get the info out of him, then use face camo to look just like him. Honestly, if face camo were allowed to work the way it should work, sneaking around from here on out would be easy. This resistance member brought an apple in case someone needed to look like an asshole. Or, in rarer cases, someone needed a handy prompt for a loaded biblical reference. Just in case you were blind, stupid, and illiterate and missed the biblical references in Metal Gear Solid 3, Eva waits inside a church and a rolling apple leads Snake to her. David. It was you, not I, who was created from the rib of man. But I gave you life. I am your mother. So that makes Snake and Liquid... Ugh... Oh, Cain and Abel. It's normally illegal for someone to beat you over the head this much, but somehow Kojima gets away with it. The forbidden fruit. Appropriate. Everything about this scene can be called appropriate. During the Cold War, when the United States and the Soviet Union were still at odds, it was in that chaotic era that the Patriots were born. Most of this scene is just catching Snake up on everything that went down back then. Known as the Mother of Special Forces, she had an almost overwhelming charisma about her. The CIA feared this, so they had her eliminated. That's not exactly the reason the US eliminated the boss. Despite all the references to biblical stories in Metal Gear Solid 3, I doubt the regular worshippers would appreciate that hanging inside their church. Big Boss returned to the US with a plan in mind, and once again assumed command of Foxhound. Kojima has tried for years to figure out how his new canon fits in with the original games, but it still makes no sense that Big Boss would be allowed to take control of Foxhound after leaving the country to start his own PMC and had such controversies as possessing a nuclear warhead, not to mention the grudge between him and Zero, who effectively was running the US by that point. In Outer Heaven, and then Zanzibar Land, Big Boss plotted coup d'etat against Zero. Is that what he did? I mean, one of those games was about taking control of the world's oil supply by using bacteria. GW. The same GW we destroyed five years ago. The same. Ever since GW was cut off, JD and the other three AIs have controlled all information on every aspect of global society. But that was specifically what GW was built to do. You're telling me the other AIs could already handle that task? Ocelot wasn't fighting for the Pentagon or the Russians, and certainly not for Zero. He was fighting for Big Boss. If you squint, you can really see where Ocelot was acting on a greater plan to free Big Boss during the events of Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2. Especially in 2, where he was clearly on the side of the Patriots instead of Solid as a side who was trying to stop them. When Ocelot grafted Liquid's right arm to his own, his body was taken over by Liquid's thoughts and spirit. That's something this game can't even keep straight and changes at the very end. Neither Raiden nor Snake notice that Big Boss has an intact right eye. Since Eva has Big Boss's living remains and she is acting against the Patriots, how come she doesn't use his genetic code to take control of SOP? It's apparently easy as long as you have that. Or, since she knows this is what Liquid needs to take control of the SOP, why not destroy it before he can? It's not like this Biomort has sentimental value to her. It's actually Solidus and she knows it. Otacon. Snake, it's Naomi. What happened? She's gone. Do you remember how in Metal Gear Solid 2 they kept using the codec to have private conversations since it didn't require you to speak? This game certainly doesn't. Snake had to go through a lot of trouble following a Resistance member here. These scarabs manage the same thing while looking as conspicuous as all hell. All of these children are orphans. They are clearly not children, even from the perspective of a 70-year-old woman. And if Eva really cared about them, she wouldn't risk their lives protecting something that isn't Big Boss. Anyone with a computer can get combat training. The FPS games that these children love are distributed for free by these companies. That's the most inaccurate statement this series has ever made. After all, for them, it's only a game. The preach levels are reaching critical. Someone release the pressure valves quick. Hold on to it. Mom, you're making it weird. Somehow, this motorcycle sequence manages to be even more clunky than the one in Metal Gear Solid 3. Eva gets impaled in the same exact spot she was impaled in Metal Gear Solid 3. Kojima already used the present repeating the past storyline in Metal Gear Solid 2. Knock it off. Raging Raven might be the one person who actually sexually identifies as an attack helicopter. Let me out of this cage. I don't need 
I'm almost positive these are lyrics from a song from a few years ago that no one remembers. This has turned into Metal Gear Solid Gal Gun of the Patriots. Maybe shoot him, Snake, like you did Vamp. That is your mission, after all, and you're the only one with guns now that can do it. Naomi told me everything. Presumably, Liquid knew about the decoy vans and the biomore being transported by River because of Naomi, but she didn't know any of that. She wasn't there or listening in. And Eva didn't even mention the biomore being moved by River until just a moment ago. Well, after Naomi had left the Nomad to go back to Liquid. I finally have it. The thing I've sought for so long. Big Boss. Liquid also fails to notice the biomore has a right eye. Nice try. But when it comes to CQC, I've got the upper hand. Then how come you got your ass kicked back at Shadow Moses? Liquid also didn't use CQC back then. Adam! Did Eva really bring that apple with her just in case she needed to reference Adam and Eve? She certainly didn't seem hungry. No one is going to eat that damn apple. Would the US really have this kind of presence and authority in Eastern Europe? I kid you not, the next three minutes are devoted to US soldiers taking up positions around Liquid. Behold! Ladies and gentlemen, we have a subtitle. Bang! Bang! This game is actually the plot of Liquid trying to change the key bindings and implement motion controls. There are only six frog soldiers on Liquid's boat. They would not be able to do this much damage with submachine guns, nor would they have enough ammo. Eva knows that isn't the real big boss, yet jumps into the fire to save it like it is. Meryl falls for guys quick, doesn't she? That psychotherapy that destroyed her interest in men must have turned her into a repressed preacher's daughter. Snake just sat there a few feet away while Meryl almost drowned and did nothing. That's a far cry from the guy who spent half the game beating himself up when he thought she died in Metal Gear Solid 1. Unless the light is put out, the shadow cannot be erased. Did Kojima swipe this dialogue from Kingdom Hearts? Wouldn't be the first idea he got from them. After all, he did put some plot important games in the series on handheld. Let's bring some sanity back to this scene of the death of a beloved character with a soda drinking monkey. We pride ourselves on service. I'm not sure who does that line less justice, Will Smith or Drebin. Regardless if Drebin likes cheap magic tricks, he's no genie. Sunny will never mention what she got up to with Naomi while they were together on the plane. It ends up being rather important later. This robot is definitely being controlled by Otacon, considering it gets the best angle for an upskirt shot on Naomi. But that's not all Liquid said. <sighs> Something about Rex being ready. Rex. It takes Snake and Otacon a very long time to put together what Liquid meant when he mentioned using Rex to fire a stealth nuke at JD. One of these two built Rex and the other one destroyed it. Guns are falling silent across the earth. It's the first total ceasefire in human history. I find it very difficult to believe there are no weapons on Earth that are not smart guns that can be shut down. You're telling me even the private weapons owners who own hundreds of millions of weapons in the US alone all turn them over to either be destroyed or turned into smart guns? I know people in reality who are against the very idea of smart guns for that very reason. Campbell, where's Rex now? I think you know. A long forgotten base in US territory outside the Patriots control. So the US left Rex, its railgun, and the nuke it was loaded with lying unguarded in Shadow Moses after the incident nine years ago? I won't live a proxy life, a slave to someone else's will. I'm a shadow, one that no light will shine on. These two are rasping so hard, I feel like I'm listening to a throat cancer survivor convention. I have no future. Snake was much more upbeat when talking to Raiden back in Metal Gear Solid 2. This cutscene dragged on so long that PlayStation Now thought I had stopped playing from lack of controller input and tried to log me out of the server. I got the results back. It's official. He's on Shadow Moses Island. I see that Kojima stuck with the Twin Snakes version of Mei Ling without the Chinese accent, which flies in the face of her secret lines in Metal Gear Solid 2 where she still spoke with the accent. What did Washington do with it? The nuclear disposal facility on Shadow Moses hasn't been touched since the incident. I see no problem with leaving an advanced walking robot carrying a stealth nuke and launcher lying around in an unguarded facility. I mean, there was only a publicized book telling everyone about it. Otacon, you're not wearing your glasses anymore. Mei Ling is shocked that Otacon isn't wearing glasses, yet is unfazed by Snake being old as dirt. 
Okay, having Snake dream about Shadow Moses by including a playable section of the first game is cute and worth taking off a sin. Otacon could have dropped Snake off at the helipad instead of out in the woods. I asked an active duty army officer once, if an infantryman had to take on a tank one-on-one, -on -one, how should he do it? And what was his answer? Don't. He swore there's no way in hell a single infantryman could take down a tank by himself. This game is beginning to sin itself. Even I was kind enough to mostly let that tank battle slide. Yet Otacon finds this impossible and not Snake taking down a giant walking robot. So how did Vamp and Naomi get through Rex's hangar if Otacon had to reboot security to give Snake access? And what's more, why are Vamp and Naomi even here? Liquid apparently already arrived and took Rex's railgun. You know Snake would probably be at the hangar by now had they used the office entrance. Get it? She's a wolf? And a sniper? And Snake fights her in the same location he fought Sniper Wolf. It's like goddamn beautiful poetry. The cries. <laughs> the cries of babies. <laughs> it's so sad. Almost makes me regret making her dance to J-pop while I took photos of her ass. There is no wolf in this world that would carry someone like that. That wolf would drag her away and eat her. Huh? Oh, wait. We're on PlayStation 3. And it's looking increasingly like that's the only thing you will ever be on. Has to suck for Otacon getting cucked by the man who murdered his sister. Kojima is displaying his fetishes again. Snake, I think I might be able to get it working. I thought you needed PAL keys to activate Rex in the nuke. That was sort of a big deal. Vamp wiped the floor with Snake back at Big Shell, and Snake has only lost a step or two since then. Yet this is the easiest fight in the game. What have you done? There. Now you're a mere mortal. Vamp has stated many times that he seeks death, and the thing that would finally let him die was a nanomachine suppressor that he was seen ordering his own men to use on themselves back in South America before Liquid tested the network. He could have injected himself and died at any time he wished. Colonel, I've managed to avoid renal failure. Believe it or not, Kojima, but it's hard to watch a cutscene when you expect us to play the game at the same time. Now you can return to your true self. You can be at peace. Naomi went back to Liquid just so she could finish off Vamp, someone who is hardly important in the grand scheme of things. She gave Liquid control over SOP and nearly got Snake killed just so she could tie up a mostly needless loose end. We are the same. We're living corpses. Our bodies kept barely alive by nanomachines. Then you... Cancer. If you have nanomachine technology like that scene in the Metal Gear universe, Cancer would not be much of a concern. I've heard of aggressive cancer before, but one that kills you within minutes of stopping treatment? If Rex is still operational, how come Liquid had to abandon it and fight Snake one-on-one -on -one nine years ago after Snake destroyed it? It's not over. Not yet. Metal Gear Ray was designed as an anti-Metal Gear, so Liquid should be able to wipe the floor with a half-destroyed Rex. Fox. Again. Nice goof, but it actually shouldn't be. Since Snake was injected with a new strain of fox dye designed to kill Liquid, and he would have infected Liquid with it back when they fought in Eastern Europe. It was even stated back in Metal Gear Solid that the virus affects elderly people quicker. That has to really cut down on the cruising speed while underwater. Die, Snake! Ramming the dog to kill Snake seems like the least efficient means of doing it. If Raiden is strong enough to hold back something the size of an aircraft carrier, Vamp should never have stood a chance. If you are going to do this, then follow through and kill the character. It feels cheap when they are A-OK -okay in the very next scene. The nukes fired by Rex's railgun have a damage radius of approximately 300 meters. The target is a moving satellite that's traveling at 10 kilometers per second. I'm going to guess Rex's nuke was designed and tested for use in atmosphere, where you can expect a pressure wave to do all the damage. Blowing up JD in orbit would require the nuke to be much closer, as space is a vacuum, which means a nuke there is just a brief flash of energy and heat and then nothing. Johnny must be angling for a court-martial, since grabbing the ass of a superior officer would do the trick. So this program, you're saying Sonny wrote it? Actually, only about a third of it is her work. <laughs> Naomi was working on a program to destroy GW, but she couldn't quite finish it, so she handed it over to Sunny. Just because Otacon talked her up as a great programmer doesn't mean you should trust her to design a virus to kill an AI. I mean, dads will say a whole lot about how great their little girl is. Sunny's worm destroys the AI's intellect by triggering apoptosis in the cells. AIs are not biological. You can't trigger apoptosis in a neural net of CPUs. Drebin was last seen in Eastern Europe. 
Somehow he knew to get himself to Hawaii where the USS Missouri was stationed, the only ship in the fleet not fitted with SOP, and talked his way on board with all of his illegal weapons just so he could meet up with Snake near Alaska. Liquid's flagship, Outer Haven, is a stolen Arsenal gear model. I recall Solidus saying that Arsenal gear was a floating coffin without additional support, nuclear missiles, and multiple Metal Gear rays. Yet the Missouri is completely outmatched by it. This is a very effective means of killing yourself in a way that will ensure your death is enshrined in gifts for years to come. Not assaulting a high-tech warship. At least MGS2 had a good reason for reliving every moment from the first game. MGS4 feels like a game from a frustrated creator who just put out something that would make all the longtime fans nerd out over nostalgic references and similarities. Johnny survives this. I mean, he shouldn't. He doesn't even have nano machines. Playing this boss fight on PlayStation Now unintentionally makes it feel more like a psychic is messing with your controller due to input lag. Consider this a sin for all the upcoming game streaming services. I can't wait to objectify the hell out of you before hearing about how sad your life was. Witness my psycho -kinesis. Put your controller on the floor. Put it down as flat as you can. Yeah, this gimmick was certainly more impressive back in the 90s. Where's Johnny? Johnny should actually still be in the control room since he was knocked out by gunfire and Screaming Mantis' attempts to control him. But for some reason, he disappeared only so he can reappear and save Meryl a few minutes later. Tell me something! How come Mantis couldn't control you? I figured she probably used people's nanomachines to manipulate their behavior. No nanomachines, no control. But don't you? No! I don't have any nanomachines in me! Then how did you use all those nanomachine-controlled guns earlier? Johnny. Marry me. This has turned into character assassination. It's been my dream since I was a little girl. I thought Meryl's dream since she was a little girl was to be a soldier. Screw me, I guess, for paying more attention to the characters than Kojima did. If Raiden is here, then that means he ghosted right past Meryl and Johnny who are currently pinned down and fighting for their lives in the control room. Who do you think helped put that trench coat on Raiden since he lost both of his arms at Shadow Moses? The corridor's full of microwaves. One of us is enough. My body is a machine. I can take it. Your body may be a machine, but your heart is a human. That's cool and all, but he's not wrong. The microwave hallway is far more likely to kill you than him. And the fate of the world is kind of in the balance. This is no time to one-up the ending of Fallout 3. Otacon's robot makes it through the microwave hallway no problem. And since it's the one who installs the virus, Snake didn't even need to risk his life going through it. If the microwaves do that kind of damage to his suit, his head should be cooked like the inside of a burrito. This makes the second time in entertainment that a Mac saves the world by uploading a virus. The virus you uploaded is using GW as a conduit to annihilate the entire AI network. It's set to destroy all four AIs, along with JD, the core that tied them all together. Naomi was trusted by Liquid. She had access to Outer Haven. She had Sunny create a virus that could wipe out GW and the rest of the Patriot AIs. So why on earth did she spend her last day making sure Vamp died when she could have boarded Outer Haven and uploaded the virus herself? Don't cry on that MacBook. Think of how much it cost. Otacon somehow got on board Outer Haven and drug Snake all the way to the deck before realizing he might need a medic. Then Liquid shows up and somehow drags Snake all the way up here. I don't even see a ladder. Stopped you. Why would I want to do that? This is just as I'd hoped things would end. You could have fooled me, not because it's clever, but because Liquid contradicts himself with his actions. He sent the Beauty and the Beast unit after Snake, blew up Shadow Moses, attacked him with a Metal Gear, tried to crush him without her haven, then expected him to make it through the certain death of the microwave hallway to upload the virus. Rather than being some complex gambit, this was a miracle. I feel like I send this exact same logic in Metal Gear Solid where Liquid also needed Snake to do a very specific task but kept trying to kill him regardless. If this is the result Liquid wanted, why couldn't he have uploaded a virus to the Patriot AI years ago after he took control of GW? That's really all Snake did. You're pretty good. You're pretty good. Pretty good. Who would have imagined that an old man with a revolver would turn out to be the best character in the series and the main villain? Not Kojima, that's for sure, due to the mess of contradictions and retcons that surround him. But I'll still remove a sin for creating such an entertaining villain from the nonsense. Here's five sins for the hour-long cutscene I'm about to endure. Why is Meryl even packing heat at her wedding? There's being a tomboy, and then there's being paranoid. Just wanted to point a gun at you to show that all is forgiven. Now walk me down the aisle and hand me over to this former terrorist. Look. 
Look at the boy. Cute. Campbell's kid. Raiden, your son looks like he escaped from a Kingdom Hearts game. Do you really think he has any of Campbell's DNA? You said miscarriage. I lied. I had a healthy baby boy. You are evil, lady. Damn, did you ever think lying about a miscarriage might have sent him into this anime hell? Colonel, I've managed to avoid paying child support. War has changed. Now we have to wait for Fallout 5 to release to even the score. Wipe this meme from the face of the earth. I believe the creator of Pepe said the same thing. I have to admit, doing a fake out credit sequence that ends with Big Boss's character credit as his introduction is pretty freaking clever. It's been a long time, Snake. Considering that he came here to tell Snake good news, Big Boss is lucky Snake couldn't go through with killing himself, maybe move with a bit of urgency next time. Big Boss left the boss's gun at her grave back in the 60s, yet here it is. Eva stole my body from them and reconstructed it by replacing the missing parts with pieces from Liquid and Solidus. First, Eva made it clear she thought of Snake and Liquid as her son since she was their surrogate mother, which means she had no problem using someone she thought of as her child as spare parts for Big Boss. Second, Liquid's body was stolen by Snake and used to fake his death in MGS2. It was thrown in the ocean and had been dead for years. No way were you using any parts from him. And Ocelot, in order to fool the system, used nanomachines and psychotherapy to transplant Liquid's personality onto his own. He used hypnotic suggestion to turn himself into Liquid's mental doppelganger. Ocelot used hypnotherapy to become Liquid as part of his grand plan to free Big Boss and bring down the Patriots. But the Liquid personality hates Big Boss and would have killed him had he ever found the real one. That plan could have gone very wrong for very obvious reasons. And why couldn't Ocelot do this himself without taking on Liquid's persona? And Ocelot seemed pretty surprised by being taken over by Liquid back in MGS2. Under certain conditions, Someone can be made to play a specific role. And here's the central idea behind Metal Gear Solid V. Kind of sequel baiting. They almost made it through an entire Metal Gear game without a P joke. So long as zero remains, one will eventually grow to 100 again. Zero is clearly catatonic in his advanced age. He's no threat. Killing him is merely symbolic. You erased me two times before. Today will mark the third. About that, technically Snake only erased you once. The fox die in you is what killed Eva and Ocelot. How come it took so long for Fox Die to kill Liquid after infecting him in Eastern Europe but killed Eva and Big Boss within minutes? There's one more thing Naomi wanted me to tell you. The new fox die uh, inside you continues to multiply. At the same time, it is preventing the old mutated fox die from reproducing. Naomi had to have learned that back when she was running tests on Snake in South America. Instead of telling him the good news, she told him he would become a walking biological weapon due to the mutated fox die inside of him within a couple months, which almost led him to kill himself. She could have mentioned that in her final recorded message after installing the virus. Also, that is not how viruses work. A virus cannot do anything on its own. It has to hijack a living cell to make copies of itself. I don't see how fox die would keep the old mutated fox die from making new copies. I never thought of you. As a son. But I've always respected you as a soldier. That must be why you picked him to infiltrate Outer Heaven back in the day with the expectation that he would fail. Kojima could really use an editor who can tell him when it's time to wrap things up. That new world is yours to live in. I give you America too.